One-stop liver-focused endoscopy, EUS-guided portal pressure gradient measurement technique. Below are the author's disclosures. Case presentation. A 40-year-old male with class 3 obesity, essential hypertension, and hyperlipidemia was referred for evaluation of abnormal liver chemistries. Despite periods of significant weight loss, his liver transaminases remained elevated over the past 10 years. ALT between 20 to 93 units per liter, and AST between 20 to 71 units per liter. Abdominal ultrasound revealed hepatic steatosis, and transient elastography with a fiber scan demonstrated a liver stiffness of 12.8 kilopascals, S3 or marked steatosis, and F3 or severe fibrosis. After reviewing the risks, benefits, and alternative, the decision was made to perform an EGD to evaluate for stigmata of portal hypertension, and in the U.S. to obtain a liver biopsy and the portal pressure gradient measurement. Initially, an endoscopy was performed with the patient in the supine position under general anesthesia. There was no endoscopic evidence of varices or stigmata of portal hypertension. Then, the EUS exam was performed. The left lobe of the liver appeared diffusely hyperechoic, suggestive of steatosis. Real-time elastography was then performed in the left and right lobes of the liver to assess stiffness. The region of interest was positioned over the hepatic parenchyma, avoiding blood vessels. The average of 10 measurements was then obtained from each lobe of the liver, with a mean liver stiffness measured at 11.5 kilopascals. The Echo Tip Insight Portosystemic Pressure Gradient Measurement System by Cook Medical was then set up. This involved connecting a 25-gauge fine needle aspiration needle to non-compressible tubing to a compact digital manometer. The entire system was flushed with heparin eye saline. The needle was introduced through the echo endoscope channel and secured, while the manometer was placed at the patient's mid-axillary line. The middle hepatic vein was first identified through use of Doppler flow with a characteristic four-phase ASVD waveform. Using a transgastric approach, the hepatic vein was then punctured. Once a needle tip was seen within the vessel, approximately one to two cc's of heparin eye saline was used to flush the needle. This is visible on EUS confirming adequate position within the vessel. Then, the pressure reading on the manometer was obtained and recorded once stable. This process was repeated a total of three times, including repeat flushes of heparin eye saline each time to obtain the mean hepatic vein pressure measurement. Next, the umbilical portion of the left portal vein was identified through use of Doppler flow with a characteristic monophasic or venous hum waveform. Using a transgastric approach, the portal vein was then punctured. The same technique was followed. Pressure readings using the manometer were obtained three times, including repeat flushes of heparin eye saline each time to obtain the mean portal vein pressure measurement. The needle tract within the liver parenchyma was then observed with Doppler flow to ensure no flow within the tract. The portal pressure gradient was calculated by subtracting the mean hepatic vein pressure, 16.4 millimeters of mercury, from the mean portal vein pressure, 23.4 millimeters of mercury. Thus, the gradient measured 7 millimeters of mercury. Lastly, an EUS guided liver biopsy was then performed. Using a 19 gauge EUS fine needle biopsy needle primed with 3 cc of heparin, a transgastric puncture was performed to obtain a sample from the left lobe of the liver. Color Doppler imaging was utilized prior to needle puncture to confirm a lack of significant vascular structures within the needle path. Suction was briefly turned on and then off with a 20 millimeter vacuum syringe. The needle was then removed from the liver parenchyma and the cores of liver tissue was then expressed from the needle onto the slide. This process was then repeated using a transduodenal approach to obtain tissue from the right lobe of the liver. Follow up, liver stiffness was measured at 11.5 kilopascals with a portal pressure gradient of seven millimeters of mercury consistent with preclinical portal hypertension. Patient was discharged home post endoscopy without any adverse events. Pathology revealed mild steatohepatitis with stage 0 to 1 out of 4 fibrosis. In clinic follow-up, patient was started on a stricter diet and exercise regimen for weight loss. Conclusions. EUS guided applications have been increasing over the past decade. In patients with liver disease, endoscopy and echoendoscopy offer tremendous diagnostic information to help guide management. In particular, EUS guided liver biopsy has emerged as a safe and minimally invasive approach and an alternative to a percutaneous technique and now can be paired with shear wave elastography and portal pressure gradient measurement. Here, we demonstrate the safety and technique of EUS-guided portal pressure gradient measurement and the diagnostic workup of abnormal liver tests.